In 2003, my dad and his brothers purchased this beautiful 10-acre island in Ontario, Canada. Properties like this usually stay within families for generations and rarely come on the market. However, the descendants of the original owners of the island had been unable to come up here for many years, and so they decided to sell it. Their past relatives had created a hunt camp here over 70 years ago. Back then, this lake was only accessible by float plane, and based on the photographs that are still here, it appears they had access to plenty of those. All the original cabins were handcrafted by skilled Finnish craftsmen. They built the main lodge overlooking a large section of the lake, a cookhouse which still has the original wood-burning cook stoves and other antiques. And a wood-burning sauna cabin. They built a generator room with an old hand crank diesel generator, which provided electricity to all of the cabins. They even had a phone system on the island. Eventually, they added a pilot's cabin, a chef's cabin, a boathouse, a workshop, and several more cabins for guests. When my dad and his brothers saw this place, they knew right away it was the perfect place for our family. Over the years, we have been busy rebuilding and restoring the cabins while carefully maintaining the original look and feel of the island and its laid-back historic charm. My brothers and I have been coming up here on weekends since we were very young. When we had to pack up and make the four and a half hour drive back, we always felt like we were leaving home and we couldn't wait to get back. Today, several times a year, all of our extended family gets together here, where we enjoy each other's company, surrounded by breathtaking wilderness, making memories together, and strengthening family bonds that will last for generations. When we need a break from the road, this is the place we come to. We thank you for being here, and we sincerely hope you enjoy our Cabin Life series. Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. In our ongoing efforts to be more self-reliant, we're adding another garden so we can grow more vegetables. On this side. And set your side down. We found a large dead cedar that had fallen in the forest and they're preparing the logs to make a raised garden.
So we found these uh, kind of mounds of soil right, right beside our place and uh, I think they were old stumps that eventually rotted, decomposed and became soil. So we're using some of that to fill in the gardens plus we have a bit of black loam that we brought in by boat um, and I think if we mix the two together we'll end up with pretty good soil. And then over the years Carol's constantly uh, working on building uh, soil and nutrients within the soil through composting and things like that. So. We've got a bit of catch up, catching up to do, but uh, so far so good. This this garden uh, the boys built is looking pretty sweet. This one will probably be for leeks mm -hmm. and um, different things that are fall planting, um, because we were a little bit too late for this season. But it's a, it's really exciting to have that time to work with the soil and build this garden out. I think it turns out great. Potatoes. I'm super excited. Potatoes, yeah, we'll try some potatoes and see if we can get a harvest out of it, even though. Like we said, it is a bit late, but we might as well try. Good morning, guys. We had a bit of wind on the weekend. It's Monday morning, and uh, we love the windy days. It blows the bugs away, and it makes it really pleasant, but it's kind of hard on the old tree sometimes. This one had quite a bit of rot part way up. And sure enough, the wind took it and blew it down. Now, it felled it better than we could with the chainsaw because it missed the sauna or it could have come this way and hit the cookhouse. So it landed right in the middle where there's no, uh, no buildings, nothing it could damage. So that's really good. We're just gonna spend the rest of the time today cutting this down um, and we'll turn it into firewood. And then there might be, uh, might be able to saw some planks out of that piece of wood over there. So let's see what we can salvage. got all the tree work done, cut up every single branch and really made sure to clean it up because uh, the look of a messy tree falling, especially right beside one of the nice cabins is you know, not the best. So we did our best to clean it all up and then really use all the wood that we can get from the tree. The rest of the log, like the one you see here, um, up to where it's split and then the rest of the tree trunk itself that is now down and not cut up into firewood size logs. We're going to keep for when we get uh, an elastin sawmill, I guess. It, it's a sawmill that attaches to your chainsaw and then you can use a chainsaw to mill planks of wood. So basically we're just wrapping up here as a bit of a storm's rolling in. Um, we've still got a pile of wood which later on we'll take out in a boat. But for now we're going to wheelbarrow a lot of this stuff out and get it back to the cabin. The old wood shelter has seen a lot of decay over the years, so we are going to rebuild it and move it to a better location.
All right, so we've been talking a bunch about rebuilding that uh, underground storage cabin, and that is a huge project that we will, um, as soon as we have our sawmill um, start on. We just need wood and the sawmill itself to start repairing the roof and so on. But in the meantime, we actually found this cabin that I'm standing beside is our cookhouse. It's uh, one of the original cabins, and it's a beautiful area that uh, chef back in the day would have come up for for the guys that built this place to cook them food. And this was a bit of a hunting lodge, so it's a really nice antique cabin. But underneath it was also another cold storage. We can just kind of see through the crack here that it's got the same um, insulating. <coughs> Look at that, a mosquito. It's all shelved up and it's actually, there's cold air blowing out of it a little bit. And there's another access to under the cabin where we can see the same material that's used to insulate the cabin over there is used to insulate this room here. So our, it's, you know, a good guess is that this is another storage room and it's kind of been buried away. So there's just a bit of dirt and stuff like blocking the door from opening. Just have to dig it out a little. Okay, so just got it open a bit more. And yeah, it's really shelved up in here. Like, it's actually quite a big room. All right, so this is inside. And uh, as you can see, it's definitely not been used. It looks like some squirrels or mice maybe lived in here for a while. These are big, nice shelves that are in here. And it's fairly cool. You can feel it's insulated. And it's got this dirt floor. This is one that is uh, much easier for us to quickly restore while we're waiting for the tools to restore the other one. So we're gonna get this thing cleaned out and uh, we might actually be able to use it fairly soon. Wow, that's pretty neat. I'm glad we have these, especially for getting a uh, garden going. So we can store some of our stuff if we end up overwintering at some point up here. But there's a lot of cool antiques in there. We kind of cool the dig out, get working again. And all the time we uh, lived here, I never knew this was here. I just never thought what was behind these doors. I always thought it was just like most of these uh, trap doors lift up and it's just for airflow and maybe if you're storing something underneath, I just never looked. That's cool. We've all worked up quite an appetite and now it's time for one of mom's delicious open fire meals. So I'm probably gonna light multiple fires because we're gonna need a lot of coals spread out. Uh, little fires like this to get it going and then I'll have one big fire in the corner and that's where we'll draw coals out. So that'll be more of our hardwood. And then whenever we need more extra heat here, we don't have to set more logs on and restart the process. We can just drag it from there and keep the temperature to uh, whatever we want it. Hi there, buddy. Right here, I mean, I got some kindling to light the fire like that, but then as we move along here for the better coals, I got a mix of uh, our maple and birch wood, and then also some pine. This is all just from the tree that fell up there that we've been cutting up the past few days. And then just, you know, it hit a birch tree and a maple tree, sadly. So we're gonna be using all of that. Here maybe like that. Okay, you should off. literally just go like that and then in the corner. Just like oh, that. just let it sit like that. Yeah. Okay. Here, hold that up. We're gonna get the saw. Let's just measure it again. Maybe go on a further angle. If you cut a triangle, yeah. then it'll fit in it. You know, just like three inches down. I don't know if that'll work or not. It might be a bit high. But... Put that there. That's good. All right. Now, I need a, I gotta round it off for the pole to sit on it. Bring that pole up here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna flatten this or slightly around it. You wanna hold it down here? That's good for that.
Yeah. All right, so what we're making here, we're gonna tie that up to the tree, and this is gonna be um, kind of a tripod from which uh, Carol's gonna hang some of the vegetables and, and meat. It's gonna be a lot of fun, no matter how it turns out. I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Now we're making a simple syrup, basically just boiling water and some sugar. Somewhere back here, twist it. Okay, let's make the knot. And then we'll go around, flip it over again. <laughs> and then tie over the legs. We'll do it maybe twice. Yeah. Make sure it stays. Skiz. Super tight. Alright, so we're going to be hanging it back down and let all the juices flow through that way. And then we'll be flipping it after a few hours. I'm putting a, a ring of wire on it so it can hang, like Carol said, the back down. So the, the legs and breasts are at the top and all the butter's up there and it can slowly melt as it cooks and come around. So it'll be very crunchy and delicious. They're metal, so they're nice and strong. And what I'm gonna do is drive it right through so that we can hang this. And let's see if we can get it to go all the way through. And then, because they're metal, you can just bend the end on it on this side. So I'm gonna put the wire through this side and make a bit of a loop on this side, right there. And that'll work great. You only flip it once. So it sits a couple hours hanging upright and then an hour hanging the other way. So we're gonna do the same with the pineapple.
right, so we're just brining the chicken about every 30 minutes or so and just let it soak up all the juices and it keeps it from drying out. Okay, I'm going to flip the chicken over and we put a hook on the bottom so we can wire it on and cook the other side. Notice with today's meal, Carol's been using these beautiful Kamikoto Japanese made knives. Now, it's always a bonus when a knife company loves watching your meals. So they love Carol's cooking and they said, hey, can we send you some of our knives? They sent a package of three. And these are, these are incredible chef's knives. They're used by some of the three-star Michelin chefs around the world. And uh, the deal is they're, they're like a 19 step process that takes about two or three years to make. And what you end up with is an incredible sharp chef's knife. So we've never, I don't think, worked with anything quite like this before, but wow, the, the difference is amazing. We're having a lot of fun with these knives. Check out Kemi Koto if you get a chance. All right, so the chickens look amazing. We flipped them for the final time, so they look good. And the vegetables come along beautifully. So now we're gonna make what's called an almond limoncello. And really it's just uh, some lemon rinds, a bit of honey, some parsley fresh out of Carol's garden, and then the roasted almonds, which Carol's just roasting right now. So let's start with a bit of uh, the rind of a lemon. We only get the yellow part. We'll just lightly scrape that off. Because we're doing an Argentinian meal, um, the lemoncello is something they put on top of the chicken just before serving. So they say it can be used for chicken or fish, and I think it looks delicious. It smells amazing. Um, the same as the, the way they use a chimichurri down there for steak. It's something new for us. We haven't typically dressed meat with that kind of a fresh dressing, but I think it's a great idea, and they've been doing it for forever down there, and I think Argentinians know what they're doing when it comes to food, so we're going to follow that tradition.
All right, so this is the almond limoncello. This is the dressing that goes on top of the chicken. It smells amazing, super fresh, and absolutely delicious. All right, we're just going to take off the first chicken. They look amazing. They're done. We're going to unwrap them here, take off the strings. All right, so these are perfectly done. They're super moist and the aroma is amazing. I wish we had um, smell-o-vision or some kind of technology like that so you could experience what we're experiencing, but wonderful way to do chicken. So now I'm going to go ahead and put on the limoncello. Actually, you know what? I'm going to wait until everything's done and we'll put that on last. Let's go get some of the veg. Okay, first one is a pumpkin. Look at that. Wow. And we just serve it in the skins, leave all the skins on. And so I'm just going to cut a piece off for one serving. Probably what I'll do is cut it in half, like that. I'm just going to spoon out the seeds. Put a little bit of salt on it and some olive oil. All right, let's get some of the other veg. So now we just make sure there's some good salt on everything and then get some olive oil. And the last thing is just to get some of this limoncello with almonds and honey. And there you have it. Perfect meal. Sorry, here we go. All right, that was a delicious meal. Now to end, we've got some coffee going on the fire there, and we're gonna have that pineapple with some whipped cream. Let's slice into it. It's been cut, cooking all day up there. Oh, it just falls off. Beautiful. You can serve this hot or cold, however you like it. You can serve it with ice cream or a bit of cream. We're just going to serve it like this. Nice and hot. Beautiful dessert with coffee. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road.